you got somebody else taking a test. You're not taking a written test yourself. Somebody's taking a written test for you. You might can pass the roll test, but if you can't read the signs, I don't even know how you're able to pass the driver instruction test, you know, the roll test, if you can't comprehend English that well. So, but anyway, I've but, seen that. So I've reported it. Oh, uh, that's crazy. Uh, you know, and I, right. I was I was talking about that, uh, uh, you know, a few episodes back that, I, you know, I, I, I the way I talked about it, I, I just thought that they just come over with their CDL already and just have it transferred over without doing anything. But you would you mm. say but what you saying is you actually saw somebody go in there they that somebody the, the initial person that's getting the CDL will go in there and take the picture for the license and everything and then they do the right. old they do the old switcheroo when they go switcheroo. outside when they go outside for the test. Right. No, no not no, not for the no, driving test for the, driving, for the written, for the the written computer test. part. Oh, okay, so they right. so they do the old they do the old switcheroo for the uh for the written test. Yeah. Uh, for the computer yeah. test. Now, I'm I'm not, uh-huh. I'm okay. I I'm, I'm kind of shocked and and kind of confused on that because when I went in there to get well, my initial license, I went to the DMV on Mayfield Road and you know, it's just a big room. So uh, ain't no uh-huh. it, it wasn't no way possible for me to do a switcheroo with somebody because when I went up there I had to sign the paper they assigned the computer and they actually watch right. you go over to the computer. So how is somebody right. how is somebody coming in there filling out the paperwork getting the picture done? How the hell are they doing a the switcheroo if the if if they in a hey. if they in a big room with the computers and they supposed to be watching them? There's some areas where they just, you know, the folks is, is busy, you know, overwhelmed, don't pay no attention. And like I say, you you take the picture and, you know, they tell you, okay, give me a minute, blah, 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 blah. Let, let me go get everything set up before you come back. You ain't paying attention to, were you talking to this guy, were you talking to the interpreter? And then the wrong person get up and go over there and take that test. So then they so when it comes time to you know for the driving test you know for the semi driving test then they'll just that's do another, a whole different person that's outside they, right they'll do a whole right. different switcheroo and then the initial person that getting the license will go out there and drive but still take though the road test. but right. still even in the road test with the with the instructor would the instructor pay attention to the fact that this driver couldn't couldn't you know comprehend the 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 signs or the or the, or the, uh, or the, you know, or the English of saying, or yes, thank you. I, I think they may know a few words because, I mean, the instructor is not asking you to uh, read the signs out loud. Now, I went through training at FSE. The, the new way that they train these kids, they send them to like a, a college, a community college, or a truck driver school somewhere. Multiple companies is using one school. When I went through, Every trucking company had their own way of training. Like SFE in Dallas, Lancaster, uh, the school, they, they had their own physical driving academy, their own property, their own truck, um, and then, you know, their own dormitory. So when we showed up, they were putting us in their own buildings. You know, uh, uh, they put us females in, in, in the hotel room. The guys slept in the dorm. But, you know, we're on on campus. They got their own little area, you know, right? We It's all FFE owned, right? And they used to drill in us. While you driving down the street, while you training, you read out loud every time. They, it was like building muscle memory. Okay, I'm passing mile marker 209. This sign say what? Call out the bridge. Hey, when you see the sign, call it out. That That's forcing you to read the sign and notice everything that you see. And like they say, get the big picture. So when we would be riding with our instructor, not only did I head, they used to have to say, your head better be like a rubber ball on a stick. Um, you know, you guys constantly turn your head left and right every few seconds. You scan in both mirrors. You looking to see what's coming up on both sides. And all at that same time, what did you just pass? You know, she asking the question, what did that sign just say? What exit number was that? What mile marker was that? Or uh, how far to the next exit ramp? You know, if it said a quarter mile to the exit ramp or half a mile, they made us do all of that. These new schools, they're not teaching none of that nowadays. 
But as the the person that's certifying the, the new driver, they're just going to give you directions on where to go. They're not asking you if you're reading the signs or not. Wow. They're just saying, okay, I need you to perform such and such task or, you know, I need you to go here, turn right, turn left. Okay, them, them some basic commands you already prepped and trained for. Okay, I know right, left, stop, go, green light, red light. But if that person were to engage them in some other conversation, like when I went through, um, I chose and I was trying to, in my head, law enforcement, let me get to it. Right, and again, switched out. They're not receiving the same kind of training that most traditional truck drivers do because they got families that are owning, and if you haven't paid attention, they're owning their own trucking company, which, I mean, this is America. They're coming, they're taking over the truck stop, and they're, you know, getting their own fleets of trucks, and now you see up and down the trailers, you know, you can identify them easily because they have their, their, you know, some of their native markings on. You see the sheet with the sword or the little uh, halo with the bowl in the middle. So... You know, they're, they're out there and they're self-training each other. So they're not tr doing a traditional schooling like most of us are. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and and that's the, usually, uh, that's how things happen. You know, and then like I was saying, I had a co-driver when I was driving for FedEx. He employed all of them. So when they would come over from India, within three to six months, they're driving trucks. And they drove, like, the one guy that was my co-driver, he was like, oh, well, I, uh, I was an electrician. I drove an electrician truck. Or I drove, like, a little box truck reefer. So when we would drive, he could go forward. He couldn't go backwards. And if he had to make turns, i.e., like, a tight turn, um, I had to really monitor that to make sure that he was swinging out and using correct, you know, lane procedures and stuff to make turns. Um, and then one time we were coming through in a uh, uh, construction zone over in uh, San Bernardino in the El Cajon, the mountain pass, right? And so, and he jumps over to the left lane, but I'm like, dude, you need to stay over in the right lane. Uh, you know, it's barriers everywhere. And I'm like, pay attention to your lane usage. You're encroaching on... The, the lane to the right. And he was like, he couldn't understand what the hell I was meaning. And I'm like, no, you need to stay in the line. Stay over here on this side. No sooner than I said that, whoop, he sideswiped another trucker's mirror. That trucker was so bad that if he could have stopped, I swear he would have probably beat the two lights out of, out of my, my co driver. But because we was in a construction zone, neither one of us could stop. There was nowhere to pull over. And then when we got to the first safe place to, to pull over, I thought that trucker was going to pull up, you know, so we could do the report and everything like that. That dude kept going. So I don't know if he had somebody on his back end where he couldn't stop, but he kept rolling. But let me tell you, <laughs> the cussing out that came across that CD, but it was, he was like, oh, I don't know what you mean. I don't know. And I'm like, you have to stop. To, you're in the construction zone. Go slow. Pay attention. Look at these lines right here. That was like, you know, a complete new thing for him. Well, you know, with me, you know, a lot of a lot of things with me, man, <laughs> is that I, you know, you know, I had to slow down, take my time, and and people uh -huh. and people don't understand that when you actually do that, when you actually slow down, and and and, and take somebody. your time, you uh -huh. you you will see. <laughs> you see all the potential problems not being a problem because you actually took your time. You got out, you look, you seen what was up, you assess the situation uh -huh. and you just take your time. Now, when I was coming up, you know, when I was young, you know, my mom's always, uh -huh. my mom's always tell me like, yo, you need to slow your ass down. You know, I used to lock my keys in the car, you know, get up quick. Right you know, move around too fast and I'd be like, yo, I don't remember where I dropped my keys or or my wallet uh -huh. or anything like that, man. You know, you get right. you know, you you know, my mom's always tell me like, yo, you know, you're moving a little bit too fast, son. You need to you need to just slow uh -huh. down, 
take your time and, and concentrate, and, and concentrate, son. That's that's what you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. And my mom's was right. And you know, when I started, when I started doing that, when I started doing that, I uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's let's start doing that. Let's start equating that into trucking because a lot <laughs> of true. a lot of things, a lot of bad things happen. In trucking, it's because you're moving too fast. That's true. Trust me. That's true. Trust me. I, I can attest to that. You don't have, you don't allow yourself time to uh, react or, as you say, assess and then react. Exactly. Um, you know that's 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 really important. And it's, it's kind of like they used to tell us: you can always give time, but you can't get time back. You Same sure. thing like with with space. You can always take more space than you need, but you can never get enough space if you don't, you know, set up properly. So, exactly. you know, if you mess up and go too short, you can't get that space back. You can set up properly and then take plenty of space. And that's how you avoid situations.